and welcome back to the AtCast, a podcast for the study of modern visual culture. I'm your Oni slaying detective, Renu. And I'm your former hero wishing for the downfall of humanity, Soup. <laughs> this week, uh, AT stands for Absolute Territory because we'll be talking about the summer 2023 season. Woo! Woo! <laughs> uh, but before we get into that, what have we been up to? It's been a hot minute. <laughs> It has been a hot minute, but not that much has happened, at least to me, since um, most of the big stuff that happened uh, I talked about last time. You know, I was um, I was moving house and like all that stuff. Uh, we're more or less like fully settled now. Like we got we all, all the stuff organized and we have entered the part where we just get to live in the house, which is nice. Aww. <laughs> Imagine just living now. <laughs> oh, imagine just living. How is it? Is it good? Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty nice. Pretty nice. Mm. Um, we had a a little housewarming party. We Ooh. um had some people over for that, and that was fun. Mm. Uh, and I would say that that went pretty successfully. Okay, uh, how are the cats settling in? Um, yeah, they're doing they're doing fine. Um. Philip is thriving. He's having the time of his life. Um, <laughs> Cookie is, I think, doing good too. Aside from like whenever Philip decides to to harass her, oh. but you know, <laughs> that's just like that's just like Philip wants to play, and Cookie's like, "I hate you." <laughs> you know, the, the normal then. <laughs> yeah, like it's it's very like it's very like annoying younger brother energy. Mm. <laughs> Poor Philip. <laughs> he just wants friends. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the house is, like, big enough that uh, the cats only occasionally, like, get into little scuffles. And it's only ever because Cookie's being stupid. Oh. <laughs> like, Philip doesn't understand personal space, but also, like, Cookie will just, like, run at him and start hissing, like, Ah! And it's like, what? You ran at him! What are you, what are you hissing for? <laughs> <laughs> like he's not invading your personal space this time. You just decided to be aggro for no reason. Um, I just hate him. <laughs> but yeah, I to they, tell him. <laughs> sometimes they chase each other around the house. But like, so far none of them have been hurt. Mm. So okay. that's all. That's, that's all we can really ask for. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's because it's because like Philip's not really like mean. Like he's not really vindictive in any way. Hmm. And Cookie's just a little scaredy baby, so she'll like Aww. she'll like swat, but she won't actually like try to claw him. That's good. Yeah, um, they'll, they'll, they'll they'll sort that out with time. I mean, they're they're not really doing better than they were initially. So <laughs> yeah, I, I think it helps that that Cookie basically gets a bunch of the upstairs to hang out in without Philip. Um, mm -hmm. So when he does show up, she's just like, "It's okay, I have safe spaces to run to." Yeah. Whereas before, she was just, like, locked in, in the room, and she, if, if she saw him, she'd be like, I, I can only escape to the corner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, that aside, I, uh, I've just been sorting all my, uh, all my RL stuffs, like, the move coincided with, like, changing insurance, so I've had to, like, you know, do all the, the boring adult stuff, like, <laughs> changing, uh, uh, pharmacies and you know, um, talking to my psychiatrist and stuff like that. Looking for a dentist, which is, like, honestly, like, a huge pain in the ass. I don't know why dentistry sucks so bad. <laughs> it, it, like, dentists are, like, doctors, but somehow, like, even worse in terms mm. of, like, trying to find a dentist that takes your insurance. Because, like, some of them are, like, oh, no, no, we're, we actually aren't taking patients right now. We have an enrollment period, which is, like, ah! What? I've never heard that. Wow. Yeah, like a couple of the places I've looked at are like, yeah, yeah, we only started accepting patients on like the first. It's like, why? Oh my god. That doesn't make any sense. What are you talking about? Whatever. They're that anyway. good. <laughs> like, I, I, they're just, they're just, they're fucking cracked, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, uh, I need to put a little bit more time into looking for a dentist because, uh, boy, I really, mm. really need to see one. It's been a couple years. Mm. Ah. Haven't seen one since before before the old pandemic. Ah. So uh 
Got to get all my teeths. Got to get all my teeths cleaned and stuff. Mm. But yeah, I, I mean, my life has been exceedingly normal and boring. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, what have, uh, what have you been up to? I can't really say a whole lot different. Um, uh, I've been working on, you know, artwork pretty steadily. Uh, had my birthday this month. That was very exciting. Nice. Um, I've been playing spooky games all month. And uh, I just last night beat Resident Evil 2 Remake. I did, like, the nice. second playthrough. Because yeah, there's, like, two routes that you can do. Um, so I beat Claire's route last night. So I'm all done with that game. Nice. Resident Evil 2, one of the, the video games of all time. It is one of the video games of all time. They did a really good job with the remake. I was super impressed. I've heard um, a lot of good things mm -hmm. about it, yeah. Yeah, it's really, really well done. Um, it was It was one of those games where it's like, I hate playing this because it's scary, but the game is so good, so I want to keep right. playing it. <laughs> It's like eating spicy food, you know? It's like, oh, this mm -hmm. is so good, but it's, it hurts so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, aside from that, yeah, that's, that's basically, it's just been work and games. That's a good life. Um, you know, that, that, is, yeah. that is a good life. <laughs> I, I, I agree. Yeah. So uh, shall we get into it? We just, just hop right into anime? Sure thing. It, it was, yeah. I mean, this is what I hope will be a relatively short episode because the summer season was honestly kind of sparse. It was. And, you know, we, we took it pretty easy as a result. So I think this will be a pretty chill episode, too. For I, I think so. On, honestly, out. like, it got, to, it got to the point where it just, like, wasn't even worth trying to catch up anymore because there were so few shows. We just, like... We just decided, well, well, we'll just take the season off of like watching as a group, and we'll just we'll, we'll watch stuff on our own time. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it was a, uh, you know, uh, it was a very chill season. Honestly, I I don't actually think I finished anything because uh, I was watching Zombie One Hundred until like it didn't come out for like a month, and then I completely forgot to watch the rest of it. <laughs> So, like, I, I, I went back and tried to catch up on it this past week, and it, like, stopped at, like, episode 9 from what I... Oh, it's, like, still not, still not done. Yeah, I think so. Okay, at least cool, from what cool, I cool, could cool. find. Uh, I might be mistaken in that, though, you know. But, yeah. I, I, I don't know. They might, they might have decided to take the rest of the core off, so... Yeah. Who knows? Who knows what's going on with that production schedule? Yeah. <laughs> it seems like quite the disaster. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, let's, uh... Let's get into the old season room uh, season here. Um, mm -hmm. The girl I like forgot her glasses, which uh, we watched an episode of, and yes. it was kind of boring. <laughs> it uh, was. It had a. It had like one of the most notorious trailers of the season. That's um, right. It had all yeah. all the weird perspective shit. Yeah, right, right, right. So weird. If if anything, uh, anyone who's listening to this, if you didn't uh, catch our trailer, watch watch the trailer for this anime. The girl I like forgot her glasses. It's short because it's a trailer, and it's worth it just to see how strange they decided they they decided to go the most weird route possible to animate this slice of life romance. Yeah, anime. they do these these really weird, like, long, like, perspective shots from, like, very strange angles where everything is, yeah. like, stretched and foreshortened, like, like almost like a fish eye. And, yeah, like from the wrist or from the and, ankle. Right, and it'll, like, follow, <laughs> it'll follow this point for, like, multiple tens of seconds, yeah. which is, like, very strange. Um, yeah. And I think it's it's because the studio, um, I don't remember what, what other uh, anime that they were notorious for, but um, I think it's because they, they have a very specific, like, uh, CG-powered workflow. Yes. Um, and as a result, it's kind of like, it's kind of like UFO Table, but like, it's just weirder. Like, if UFO Table decided to just do stuff for the sake of doing stuff rather than like for any cohesive reason. Yeah. Puzzling um is is how I would put it and I would say that the story and the characters was cute enough 
but I think I would rather read it in manga form. I think in in the anime it just dragged a little bit too slowly. Yeah, I um I would tend to agree. Um it's like the rest of the anime outside of the weird trailer is just okay. And yeah, the pacing does kind of drag. It wasn't like anything that you know, you would hang on to the edge of your seat over. I mean, it's a slice of life. So <laughs> If you're looking for those vibes, then yeah, right. Like, it can they, it can only be romance, so yeah. it can only be so exciting. Yeah, but, exactly. Uh, yeah. I mean, even even then, like, I think it's it's like about a girl that's so like helplessly dopey that you're just like, ah, it's that's I guess the moe appeal is that like you don't even know how this person has survived. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like sorry you you need your glasses to see but you, you came to school without them like multiple days in a row i, th I think i i, I don't know like, how have you not been like hit by a car <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know i uh i don't know i don't think that the anime was for me um maybe i would have some more luck with the manga um i tend to find with certain like shows and certain genres i would rather read the manga yes. um and I, th I think that actually probably depends on the person because for me i think i'd like i'd rather read the manga so that i could read it at my own pace but i, yeah. I think there is mm -hmm. a certain appeal to watching a slice of life show that mm -hmm. like goes at its own pace and i think that pace is gonna just differ for everybody like mm -hmm. I think a particularly well done slice of life show will will resonate pretty broadly mm -hmm. um and be engaging like you know regardless but uh this this one was a little it, it was a little slow for me um and yeah, it didn't same. really catch mm -hmm. my uh catch my attention in any meaningful way I would say yeah yeah that that'd be my consensus too is if you like it, but you find the anime too slow, maybe maybe catch the manga. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, Reign of the Seven Spellblades, which we watched uh, an episode of, I believe. Um, and the premise of this one is like, it's kind of like Harry Potter, but yes. like with swords. Um, yes. And <laughs> the spellblades are like they're like literally swords. Yes, it's not wands; it's swords. <laughs> I, I thought it would be some kind of, like, you know, uh, metaphor for, like, seven, like, figures that are, like, so good at magic. They're called spell blades or whatever. Um, yeah, that's but, what I kind of thought, too. Like, they'd be But no, it's, like, it's, it's like, literally about magic swords, which yeah. I, guess that's, I guess that's fine. I think the premise was <laughs> fine. I think it was interesting uh -huh. enough. I think the first episode was interesting enough. Uh, it felt like a solidly good anime in my estimation like nothing that i would go nuts over but like you know during a slower season like this i think it's not the worst show to watch yeah if you're looking for something that is harry potter adjacent right it's a, it's a magic school yeah like magic um, magic academy stuff mm -hmm. it's like Yu -Gi -Oh, mm -hmm. Yu Gi Oh gx but for magic <laughs> and not magic cards or whatever <laughs> uh-huh <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, I I don't know, cause like I I feel like um the quality of like just sort of random original fantasy uh adventure type anime like just mm -hmm. the baseline quality of of this genre I feel like has gone up just in recent years, cause like there's like a pretty solid one every season or so. Like if this is the kind of stuff you like. You know, stuff that isn't super unique, but, like, has at least some of its own identity, mm -hmm. um, then this is probably, you know, something that you, you might want to watch. Yeah, I, I would it's say at least, so. Mm -hmm. It's at least not an isekai. It's not an isekai. <laughs> Very important. <laughs> Very important. <laughs> the next one we're talking about is an isekai. The, actually, the next two that we're talking about are isekai. <laughs> the next two! <laughs> um, reborn as a vending machine, now I wander uh -huh. the dungeon. This was... 
<laughs> maybe one of the dumbest premises for an isekai I've ever heard. And it's not it's not good. Like it sounds ridiculous <laughs> to say this, but it was like shockingly not good, but we still watched like a decent number of episodes just because it was like he's just a fucking vending machine. It's it's okay. It was it's not the worst anime that I've seen. It was actually pretty mid. It was it was it was all right. Um, it was exceedingly mid, which to me is like a crime. <laughs> that's you know what? That's fair. I will say that the majority of the beginning was very like whatever, right? And then the moment that it kind of flipped for me was when he started turning into different types of vending yeah, machines. Yeah, that was that was the <laughs> that was the highlight of the entire anime to me was yes. when he like decided, okay, I'm a vending machine otaku. I know a lot about vending machines. Uh huh. I've unlocked the power to transform into different vending machines. And he transforms into the most wild fucking vending machines you've ever heard of that I have to presume are real. Like, one of them was like an oxygen vending machine. Yeah, so it's, it's like, okay, Jesus it, Christ. It was so, okay, I don't remember how many episodes he spends as the normal vending machine, you know, the kind that just dispenses drinks or whatever. But he spends, like, a long time as that. And um, for anyone who hasn't watched this show, it's it's a guy who is a vending machine fanatic, gets reborn into another world as he gets, a, he gets an, crushed a literal by a vending, vending machine. machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he the, gets and, reborn as a vending yes. machine. Into a fantasy world as a vending machine. So nobody in this world knows what he is. They're like, what is this thing, this creature, uh, magic item, right? And so he gets kidnapped or whatever. And because people don't know what he is, but they kind of want to exploit him somehow. And then he comes across this girl who is very strong. Like, she put all her points in strength, basically. And uh, she is actually able to, like, just carry him around on her back like a backpack. And they make friends and whatnot. And... She gets into some trouble too. They get separated, so on and so forth. And yeah, he he spends a lot of time as this regular drink machine, and then eventually, like, starts dispensing like snacks and soups and stuff like that. And he gets integrated into the local economy. And then the show, like I said, turns on a dime once you once he realizes, I guess, that he can turn into different types of vending machines. And then it becomes infinitely more interesting. <laughs> For this this boring, super boring show becomes interesting once you realize, ah, this is an outlet for someone who may want to learn, for whatever reason, the history of for vending machines. For whatever reason, just about the most yeah. esoteric vending machines. Yes. Like, you never, you probably never, this probably never occurred to you that there are different types of vending machines out there, like the oxygen vending machine. <laughs> but there are, and you can learn about them through this series. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I think the thing about this to me is mm -hmm. it walks this very weird line where the premise of it is like obviously parody, but then it's yes. played so straight that you kind of forget how like ridiculous the premise was to begin with. And it's like, yeah, well, well this is just Isekai now. Like, what? Yeah. Why did we even have the vending machine conceit? Yep. But. Yeah, I don't know. I, if you if you are bored and you want to see just the most absurd isekai, then then this this probably is for you. It's not as bad as some isekai out there, but it's definitely also not as good. I mean, <laughs> just he's not an road. incel. He's just a vending machine. Yeah, he's just a vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's all I got to say about that. Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> okay, uh, the most heretical last boss queen from villainous to savior, which we watched uh, an episode of. Um, I know we didn't get too far in this. This is another show that, like, I think was was pretty pretty good in terms of like what was airing, like relative to the season. Um, this show is a it's a villainous isekai premise um but it is more serious than hamefura so it's basically like if hamefura like stuck to the initial sort of like you know uh destruction flag premise like longer 
and you know didn't just devolve into like uh, a romantic comedy where everybody wants to to protect best girl, right? Yeah. Um. So if you wanted that premise, but like played more like seriously or more straight, like this is probably probably the one for you. Um, yeah. I, have... I mean, it's a. Uh huh. Sorry. I've read the manga for this, so. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it um from the from the get you can tell it's a lot it's it's very serious um mm-hmm. because it's about this girl like a little girl who enslaves her younger adopted brother right like she um, she's like sincerely awful <laughs> yeah she is like legitimately was was you 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 would look at this child and be like oh you were born evil because uh <laughs> she has no remorse she, she like very like like makes her younger adopted brother sign a magic contract that literally makes him her slave. Um, and she, like, y- exploits this to, like, have him, like, I don't know, abuse his mother and, like, like other stuff and it, it, to make him do awful things. And, uh, of course, in the story, it, it doesn't end well for her. And so now that she's been isekai into this character, the main character has been isekai in- as this little evil girl, she's like, all right, I gotta do something different. I can't have things go that way. Mm-hmm. Um um, but yeah, she, <laughs> I remember the names of the series cracking me up, because <laughs> the little girl's name was Pride, and yeah, the last name is Royal Ivy, right. and then the little brother's name is Stale. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love whenever, uh, anime has, like, these just random sort of English sounding names. Yeah. They'll just choose the, the most out their names it was like that one what was that one like spy show that we watched where like the care mm-hmm. like one of the characters had the most like bonkers fucking name um wasn't it like chateau <laughs> Sorry. yeah it was it was something like crazy <laughs> weird yeah it, i remember chateau was part of it <laughs> but anyway yeah um if that if that interests you then that might be, might be a good watch mm-hmm. for you um mm-hmm. Ten Puru, no one can live on loneliness. Um, this was this was to me the biggest surprise that we watched. In that I was expecting like pretty much like nothing because like it looks like such a generic harem comedy from mm. like uh, like honestly like straight straight from like the the mid two thousands right like yes. When when that was like the the big sort of like the, the genre, yes. Um, and mm-hmm. honestly, like it was surprisingly charming, despite being an etchy harem like rom com. And yeah, I think that just comes down to the fact that like the physical comedy of it and the comedic timing was actually really good. Yeah, I was surprised too, and I think it. I, I want to say that it was probably born from some, uh, from a team that actually really appreciated the genre. You know, I like, I feel like this one hundred percent is like very a very solid entry into a you know a, a long and storied genre um, <laughs> of edgy, <laughs> edgy harem rom coms. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like I I w- I would say like yeah, def- definitely if that's the kind of thing that you uh like uh then this this is a this is a good watch actually like it's when watching it i really felt like my brain turned off again and i was like 14 watching like you know love hina or whatever that's what i was thinking of love hina yeah yeah I, I'm, we're not gonna say that this is another love hina but we're gonna we are gonna no, say that not, it kind of like yeah. brings you back to that vibe right? it's not that as time. it's not as like genre defining right because yeah. it's obviously just like a you know played by by the by the book uh yeah. harem rom-com with the mm-hmm. sort of like the funny sort of twist right the the uh central gag being that uh he doesn't want to be horny he just wants to be happy. <laughs> so he goes to become a monk. Oops. Temple's full of ladies. Oh. Whoops. Yeah, he wants to avoid being like his uh, father who was like a player and yeah. you know, had a reputation of using women. 
I, I think it's also funny that once they find out who he is, they, like, all fucking hate him, too. Yes. They're like, oh, no. You're the son of that guy? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <sighs> so, yeah, I mean, surprisingly enjoyable harem, etchy rom-com in the year of our Lord, 2023. Color me surprised. Did Let's not go. have that on my bingo list. <laughs> okay uh masterful cat is depressed again today which is about a uh about a single office lady who lives with a large cat that is basically her housewife and mom yes. um and that's it this is by the same studio that uh is that was doing the girl i like forgot her glasses also so they're just like pumping yeah. these pumping these things out they this are. show was fine it was i would say the better of the two uh, that were, are airing from this yeah, studio. Yeah, I, this I season. would agree. But I, yeah. I also think that probably some of that is, is like, demographic. Like, I, I think it's just because, like, they're fairly similar in vibe, to be honest, in terms yeah. of, like, uh, what, kind of, what kind of show they are. It's just the fact yeah. that, it's just the fact that we're, like, we're, like, old people now. Like, we just don't want to <laughs> watch teenagers do shit. <laughs> That's like, fair. You know what? If I, I want to watch more to listen, the salary woman, yeah. If I, yeah, I was like, <laughs> if I want to watch like a boring slice yeah. of life, like you know, um, just just give me the slice of life, right? I I, yeah. I want I want just like depressed office lady slice of life now. That's that's it. That's all I want. Yeah, she gets taken care of by her cat, her larger than life Maine Coon cat. <laughs> yeah, don't we? Don't we all just wish we had a, a housewife cat? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this one is a very like. Yeah, my cats uh, don't do shit. <laughs> uh, this uh, this show is exactly as it says in the title. Mm -hmm. There's no subversion or anything like that. So if you want, nope. if you want to watch a cozy show, slice of life, busy office worker lady who gets taken care of by her cat, that's what that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's like I would say that it is good in that this is a niche that is not as often serviced mm -hmm. so just on that merit alone i would say it's it's a worthwhile watch if you want to watch a slice of life show about an adult for fucking once <laughs> good <laughs> i don't want to live as a teenager forever i want adult mm -hmm. yep <laughs> All right, um, the gene of AI, um, which was uh, an interesting show, um, about uh -huh. a world where like AI has gotten to the point where, uh, you know, it's like true, true AI. Like, you know, people have become um, sentient, and like the the androids that walk among us have integrated into to society and all that. Um, and then it's about just like, kind of interesting like philosophical uh sort of uh detective e kind of doctory kind of uh situations i would say like cases yeah mm -hmm. like the first one where um in in the first episode basically uh a guy tries to back up his wife's personality which is illegal, by the way. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. um, and download a virus into her brain because you can't. It's illegal, so it's, it's real sketchy. And uh, they call they call the AI doctor, who is probably also an AI, but like he has the special eyes, so nobody knows he's an AI. I think is is the <laughs> thing. I think that's supposed to be the thing. Like they got like weird eyes, except mm -hmm. for our main character doctor guy, who is like. He's got the normal eyes, I guess. I don't. I I think it's like don't they have like square eyes or something? And then like if they if you uh -huh. have round eyes, you're like a person, like a like round pupils, yeah. you're like a person. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was the kind of thing going on. Um, I thought the premise was really interesting. Um, I feel like it wasn't quite my cup of tea i think um mm. even though the situations and ideas it had were very interesting to me mm -hmm. um 
in an ideal world, I think I would probably watch more of this to know. Um, but just, like, opening your first episode with, like, you know, like, what is it, you know, what does it mean uh, if you are a person, if you are a true artificial intelligence and a copy of you is made? And, like, what happens when, when that copy, it, like, is used? Like, when, when you actually get backed up, like, what happens to those, like, two weeks? Like, how much does that two weeks matter, you know, to, to you and your your being right you know your your soul in a sense um i thought that was i thought that was cool i I thought it was cool that a an anime was willing to interrogate that yeah i i i quite liked it um they were basically questioning i don't know is which version of her like if if they have like a backup version of her versus the one that you know died from the virus like which one is real Mm -hmm. or is the one that got backed up like fake or like what does that all mean you know yeah and And like i i did like that they questioned that um, right and and it's and then she was like and like um you kind of had that thing where she was just like i don't i don't know if i want to be backed up like what what happens to this current version of me right yeah yeah it uh uh-huh I would say it's not a, it's not like a groundbreaking thing to say, just because there's so many amnesia plots where that's like the central conflict, right? That's what I was thinking of, is that it's very much like a Soma-esque um, storyline or question, um, and which Soma explored very well. Um, but I'm not, I don't, I don't think it's bad that they're exploring it kind of sort of differently, I guess, in this universe. Yeah, I thought too. it was, I thought it was yeah. good. I thought it was fine. Honestly, like. Yeah. Probably this one episode of uh of the gene of AI alone has probably more thought and intent put behind it than like I don't know whatever Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven has to say about whatever. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but we liked the anime. <laughs> oh, the anime was great. Yeah. Um. The anime was great because it kind of didn't give a shit about any of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I actually, I kind of want to watch more of this. I, I feel bad that I didn't keep up with this one. Um, I, this I is, agree. This yeah. is actually up my alley. Yeah, um, I love when, you know, at least writers try to question this kind of stuff. Uh, hopefully, it won't like Whether, cube anime me at the right, end. Right. Like, I, I, you know. I was gonna say like um, <laughs> a lot of times like stories like these are based on novels and yeah, like that leave some more room for them to be more thoughtful discussions or explorations of like Mm -hmm. more complicated you know nuanced topics um Mm -hmm. that doesn't always mean that they're good right like yeah (laughs) the fucking cube anime the other anime that that, that's by the cube anime guy like (sighs) man those are the things i always think of where i'm just like man this would be so interesting if it wasn't bad (laughs) It could have been so good. It had such an interesting premise. <laughs> yep. Um Yeah, I I mean yeah. it I would I would say it's it's worth uh worth a watch if that kind of thing interests you. Yeah, if you like a more philosophical anime that revolves around identity and sentience, mm-hmm. then I would recommend this. There's now. also um a manga so if you're like maybe the anime is not quite my jam maybe i want to you know read things at my own pace there's manga so yeah Mm -hmm. okay level one demon lord and one room hero which is about um it's about a fantasy setting where uh the heroes defeat the demon lord and then uh society moves on the demon lord gets reincarnated and he's like where's the hero it's time for our rematch and it turns out he's uh he's a jobless bum living in like a tiny apartment and uh society has become like a modern like you know a modern society with like cell phones and shit um Mm -hmm. it's basically like gintama with a more (laughs) fantasy sort of bend Uh to it yeah I thought this was actually really interesting. I I didn't end up watching more of this, but I think probably of all the stuff that I watched, like this is the one I would watch more of most uh, readily. Uh-huh. Um I I really enjoyed the premise of it. Um it is like the idea of the 
setup, right, of the mm. um this kind of big conflict that happens, and then like society just kind of moves on, and then there's no place for heroes anymore. I think that's like an interesting concept. Um, yeah. And obviously, uh-huh. like they're not gonna do like a, a super in in depth like you know dive and exploration of that that idea. Um, but if that is an idea that interests you, then you're probably already watching uh, Free Run at the funeral. So, you know, and like that just does it, <laughs> that that actually does does do it in like a really interesting way. Um, I'm not going to gush about it now because, you know, everyone and their mom is watching it. And it's it's like the anime of the season in a really, mm-hmm. really packed season. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but this is like a very, it's like a comedic take on that um, where it's just like, oh, he's just like a bum now. And the demon lord's like, whoa, whoa bud, like, y- you gotta, you gotta get better so that we can have our, have our rematch. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the demon lord is trying to restore the hero, but the demon lord is also just a child, so. Just like a little, a little boy. Yeah, they're both a little washed up, and they're trying to reclaim some glory or make something out of their lives in their current situation. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I yeah. I actually really do want to want to uh, watch more of this. I just kind of forgot until now. Like I forgot that the summer season even happened. <laughs> to be honest. Like it's not like the stuff in the summer season uh-huh. was was bad. Like there were a couple of no. pretty solid shows. It's just that like I don't know, because I've spent the last like 2 months of my life just like moving, right? <laughs> like I think it's because you were you were simultaneously moving and addicted to Baldur's Gate that nothing else Oh my god, holy shit. That. Nothing <laughs> Yeah, you're right. That that was it. Nothing got done cuz I dumped it, like 280 hours into Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Speaking of Renny, you should uh you should you should get this game if you don't have it. Aren't you guys maxed out in your party? You guys are already playing, right? Well, we're playing a multiplayer game, but that doesn't mean we can't play one. <laughs> I think that'd be fun. I have it on my wish list. We'll see. Nice, nice. <laughs> well, if it ever goes on sale and you decide to buy it, you decide to pick it up, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we, uh, we're playing a multiplayer game right now. I'm not playing a couple of multiplayer games. Um, it's, it's funny because like, when you play the single player like modes you can really like you know sit down and like make make a character and like spend a lot of time making your character um and you get really invested in your character because like you know you're with them for like 200 hours and then like when you play a multiplayer game like you're just like all right here's my here's my character his name is john wrestling (laughs) 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 which is actually what i have what i have named that character by the way no his name is John Wrestling. He's a dwarf with a with a handlebar mustache. <laughs> um, he's an abjuration wizard. <laughs> he's, he's a frontliner wizard. My my concept comes from a a character I played once named the Warden, who was basically the Boulder from uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender, uh-huh. but as a as a wizard. <laughs> who would basically the concept was he would cast like cloud of daggers or some other spell that has like you know um a a constant you know uh area of effect damage and then he would throw mm-hmm. people into it mm-hmm. so that that's what i'm that's what i'm doing in that game um, that's very fun I in like another that in another <laughs> game i'm also playing a character literally named the boulder <laughs> Uh, who is uh, like an, an armed fighter that throws stuff. <laughs> you play a lot of chunky characters. Let's go. <laughs> I enjoy chunky characters. I enjoy, <laughs> I enjoy the, the funny, the funny. Funny haha, chunky funny characters. Funny haha, funny haha, throwing. <laughs> buff wizard. <laughs> yeah, buff wizards. Let me tell you, buff wizards are very funny. <laughs> All right, um, Ayaka, which I had to like look up because I I didn't remember what this was, and then I remembered what it was when I saw the like the the cover art for it. Um, what the fuck was this show? Oh my god, yeah, I just looked at the cover too. <laughs> what is this show? I um, I remember everyone was color coordinated. Did, yes, yeah, you know, yeah. So we had blue guy and green guy. Um. It, there's some like, strange powers involved, and they're yeah, on an island together. There was some like, some weird like trauma stuff with like yeah. his like magic powers, and he has to go to like 
he has to go to like the islands where like other magic power people live and then mm-hmm. like he gets into a scu- I it was really not good but in kind of a funny way like it was honestly like it it's kind of like it wasn't even like super like super exceedingly mid it was like bad but in a way that's kind of fun to watch <laughs> it was bad <laughs> Like, like the pacing was weird, the story was weird. Right, like, I, I, all, all of it felt. I want to. I want to be clear here. This was not a good anime, and it no. looked like. I think it's because it's like a. I think it's probably like a multimedia project or something. Um, mm. but it feels like so so strange. The character designs are like, it, like they're just all over the place. Like the, yes. they all look like they come out of different anime. Like the main yes. character looks like he walked out of persona. And then there's this like yeah. jet set radio motherfucker. And then yes. like, and then oh this fucking, God, yeah. <laughs> and then this, this fucking guy that walks out of like, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 like, like, uh, own Myoji, the like fucking, uh-huh, uh-huh. um, the mobile game. It's yes, like... yes, 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 yes. It was, I remember almost nothing about it, other than that, honestly, it was, like, a better time watching than I expected, but not for any reason that the anime provided. It was just kind of, it was very heckleable. Yes, it was, it was very easy to clown on with a friend or two. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, if you wanna, if you wanna bat, well, I don't wanna be too terrible and be like, this is just not good at all, but, like, if you just wanna show to, like, I don't know. Dunk on with your friends. If you want to show the to beat the shit out of. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Yep. Okay. All right, um. Next, we Un- have undead girl murder farce. Yes, undead murder farce. Which it you is... you watched more uh-huh. of than I did. Um, but I did. I, yeah, I, I did intend uh-huh. to watch more of this. Um, I watched, it's, it's still ongoing. Um, I, okay, okay. I, I watched, yeah, all of that they had, um, available. Well, most of what they had available up to, like, where I felt like the season would end. I was, um, I was reading some of the synopsis and I, I understand why you enjoy it. Yes. Uh, oh, so, okay. So I both enjoy and don't enjoy it. <laughs> right, right. Um, so it is, at least with the first case. Um, a surprisingly faithful um, interpretation of mystery shows like the older ones, right? With like, you know, like your classic Sherlock's and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, not in any of this like new age, like weirdo Sherlock an- adaptations. And so I right, thought this right, one right, was right. going to be one of those, right? Just another weirdo Sherlock adaptation. Um, but no, it's it, it was actually surprisingly good. It, the first case was about vampires, and it was a classic, like, whodunit, locked room mystery kind of deal, right? And I was like, ooh, I'm here. I'm here. I'm in it. Um, and yeah, they solved the case. It was very tidy. Um, you get introduction to the characters, right? You have the main character, who's a headless immortal lady, who has um, a maid who can um, fight really well. She's a, she's a fighting maid. <laughs> I love that um, maid. You give a maid yes. a gun, I am in. Yes. She has a gun. Yeah, that's very much the soup character. And then there's an Oni who is like, uh, he's very much into to classic Japanese storytelling theater, right? So his lines, I feel like, were really difficult to translate to English mm, because mm-hmm. a lot of it is like, you just have to be Japanese. Um to understand a lot of the puns that he was making, a lot of the stories that he was kind of, like, telling or emulating. Um, a lot of his dialogue is, cent- is centered around that. Um, so they made a very, very strange trio, and I wasn't sure how I felt about the vibe between them. It gets better later on once you kind of settle into their dynamic that they're very self-aware of how weird they are, mm-hmm. right? Um, in the beginning, it's kind of hard to get used to. Um, yeah, uh, the show is, like... It actually tries to, like, bring up mysteries, create them, and then solve them, right? Um, unlike a lot of other uh, mystery shows that they, they kind of devolve into some kind of, like, weird action thriller. Um, yeah. 
mishmash. Yeah, they try to make the climax too exciting, and so then it just becomes a mess rather than being about the story or the cases. Mm -hmm. Um, So with this one, um, I have mixed feelings about it, though, because later on in the series, they start introducing other characters, right? Like, uh, they introduce Holmes, which... Right, of course. He Yes, he thankfully, again, was like a more classic interpretation of Holmes, and I was pleasantly surprised. They had Holmes and Watson, and they uh, the designs were actually more based on like, you know, like the really old interpretations of Holmes, where mm-hmm. it was like the live action, like black and white drama kind of yeah. deal, and then they like, you know, they eventually made like a color version of it, but it's like really old TV drama interpretations of him. That's what his design kind of reminded me of. Um, so I was pleasantly surprised by that. And they didn't play him like super over the top. Like, wow, look at this dude. He's like, I don't know, like addicted to drugs. And he's just like, all he thinks about is like solving cases and playing 5D chess or whatever. He's just like, he, they play it straight with him. And I liked that. Um, and uh, so that part was fine. But then later on, they introduce more characters like... Uh, Moriarty, who is implied to have stolen, uh, the body of, uh, the main character, right? The, the, the head character, (laughs) the Mm -hmm. character that's just a head. Uh, it's implied that he stole her body and then he's got, like, an organization of, like, evil supernatural people. So they have Camilla the Vampire, they have Jack the Ripper, Uh (laughs) they have, they have uh frankenstein's monster they have all it's just it's just this like it it like so quickly becomes bungo stray dogs okay yeah i was gonna say the mystery genre yeah yeah but not even just just the mystery genre just 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 like just like fiction (laughs) i was gonna say i noticed i noticed like how yeah how many of the characters came from like classical literature like yeah uh i saw that they had arsene lupin they had they had Lupin, yes. They had they had the Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> uh, that's so funny to me. I love that. <laughs> it was like the the uh, the the case where they bring in Lupin was when they started opening up to the rest of the weird cast, and I was like, mm, I'm over it. <laughs> I I I under, I kind of I you know I get it I get it um because if it was like a grounded kind of like but. If it was a grounded but somewhat strange mystery series, yes, yes. you know, because of the, um, because of the obviously the supernatural stuff, um, mm-hmm. it's like one thing, right? That's yeah, I agree. Like, I think that's a very interesting premise. Like, actually, I really yeah. like premises that are classic genres but like mm-hmm. set in like non standard setting. So, like, yeah. mysteries that are set in fantasy or like mysteries that are mm-hmm. set in you know, uh, supernatural stuff. Uh, Yes. I can see how it might get a little silly once you start, like, going full Bungo Stray Dogs. It was so silly because I would have, I would have even understood it if they just introduced the characters, like, one at a time, right? So, like, first we got Sherlock, and they do a a case with Sherlock, right? There's a little bit of a rivalry because Sherlock's, you know, a well-known detective, and then um, our, our, our main character here, who's just a head, she's not as well known you know she's Mm -hmm. she's only well known for being a head an immortal head um not as a detective right and so she has a bit of a a little bit of a rivalry with 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 holmes and 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 i liked that i i liked that they were both trying to solve the same case they were trying to solve the lupon case and prevent lupon from stealing the thing Mm -hmm. it's like all right well uh i guess that's fine you know um, but then, like, towards the end of the Lupin case is when they, like, throw in all of the other characters that I mentioned all at once. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> because it just, it just stopped being about the case. She did end up solving it, but it felt so unsatisfying because it felt unimportant compared to this wacky, colorful cast that they just threw in all together at the end for one huge battle, right? They were all mm-hmm. fighting, right? Like, the maid, the fighting maid was battling against the vampire, um and there was some weird like like undertones there like maybe they were attracted to each other slash you know fatally attracted to each other and it was it was like okay that's fine and then um uh lupon oh no drac the ripper has like 
a fight with like the Oni guy and they're like facing off. I was like, oh, this is going to be some bitter rivalry between them. And it was so everywhere. And I just wanted it to continue being about the case because it started off so strong. So the fact that they went from that vampire case straight into this Lupin case, it was such a weird tonal shift. Mm -hmm. Um, And I didn't appreciate it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think I probably would have also preferred if it had just like stuck to the mysteries. Like even, I think even if that they, they like went like really over the top with introducing like characters from from classical literature, if it was mm-hmm. just like you know isolated cases, right? Like yes, almost more like a Sherlock Holmes sort of like yeah, you know, mm-hmm. um, this is like this is the case where we're visiting like a Sherlock Holmes sort of world, and this is like you know, the case where we're we're kind of, like, peeking into Lupin's world, and then, like, mm-hmm. you know, here's, like, uh, you know, Castle Dracula and all that, all that stuff, right? I think that, mm-hmm. I think that would have been more interesting probably, too. Yeah. Yeah. It would have been more interesting to me. Um, and probably more this... cohesive. Uh, yeah, d- the cohesion, and, like, because they were starting to build, like, this nice, like, cohesive, like, atmosphere. It's like, okay, I get it. Like, it's very, very dark, very theatrical. Um, I like this. Um, and then they, they they just threw all of that out once they threw in all the the, the rest of these weird fictional characters. Um, after that, they get into uh, they they round off the rest of the season with this case about um, uh, werewolves. And I was like, oh, hey, that's cool, right? It's this like weird standoff between like this human village and this werewolf village, right? And they're trying to solve uh, this murder mystery where uh, human and werewolf girls are being killed, and, you know, both sides are blaming the other, right? They don't know who's actually behind it. And I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. But then they throw in a bunch of yahoos again. It's like this weird like, <laughs> organization that's trying to kill all the supernatural creatures and stuff, and it's like, I don't, I don't want this. <laughs> Just stick to the mystery. <laughs> And then Carmilla the vampire shows up again. Frankenstein's monster shows up again. It's like, I don't need any of you here. Be gone. It was already interesting. And now ugh. it just made everything more convoluted and uh, honestly kind of dragged things out. And I, I, yeah. So I have a weird love hate relationship with the show. It's good when it's good and it's a mess when it's a mess. <laughs> um,. Yeah. Uh oh, actually it did finish airing uh at 13 episodes, so I did watch all of it. Okay. Um but uh yeah, they kind of the way that they ended it off was like almost like a to be continued kind of thing like, you know. They might make more. But mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, Soupy. I think it'll just become more Bungo Stray Dogs. Ah. Uh, <laughs> the f- the fate of all such properties. Uh, and it sucks because Bungo Stray Dogs is so popular. It like I feel like they would really find an audience somehow by doing that. Mm-hmm. But they would lose me. <laughs> yeah. I understand. Mm-hmm. So that's Undead Murder Farce. Um, All right. If that intrigues you, check it out. It is actually a solid detective show, for what it's worth. Fair enough. I, I probably will uh, end up still watching it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so if if I if I do I'll I'll come back to you with my thoughts. <laughs> All right. Um Helk. Helk, which um I gave a hearty recommendation um oh, yeah? when we were watching Did you the watch, trailers. Uh, all um, of it or No, but I watched most of it and I would say that okay. it is a very solid um adaptation of uh one of my favorite web manga and like honestly really i feel like one of one of the more storied web mangas in terms of like how long running helk ended up being and how successful yeah. it ended up being um yeah. it kind of to me feels sort of uh it, it feels sort of like this like this like rosetta stone for looking at um modern uh modern deconstructions of like the the fantasy uh inversion right where it's like the yeah. the demon lord and you know human kingdom sort of dragon quest premise turned on its yeah. head um mm-hmm. like helk is about uh the demon like country right um mm-hmm. they choose a new they're trying to choose a new demon lord because their demon lord got iced and mm-hmm. 
in the middle of this competition, uh, one of the competitors is like, is like the one of the heroes. He, he just shows up and he's just like, "Death to all humanity!" And they're like, "We can't have this guy be the demon lord." And then you find out more about like you know what's going on. Like the human kingdom has essentially used forbidden resurrection magic to uh, make all of their citizens into horrific angel monsters that can't die. Yep. Um. And yeah, that's that's all I'll tell you about the, the premise. It's it's pretty interesting. Other than that, like it is, yeah. Um, the beginning episodes are about this. Uh about like the actual demon lord competition and then some other stuff kind of happens afterwards and like there's this whole arc with um one of the main characters uh Vermilio who is one of the the four heavenly lords but you know she's pretending to be like a just a schmuck she's like <laughs> I'm just <laughs> Anne from management An Chan <laughs> And then you got you got Hulk, who's this like real real himbo man, real himbo man. Yes, who just wants to help people. Um, mm -hmm. And honestly, like Hulk to me strikes a very good balance between the levity um, and the uh, comedy. Right? It's like there's moments, there's a lot of like Sukomi kind of style jokes of like very clearly absurd things happening, and a straight man kind of calling it out. And then, mm -hmm. and then there are like. But at the same time, it is really, really good about having moments of levity that are not, like, that aren't undercut by that, right? So, I think it mm. does a really good job of managing its tone. Yeah, I, I think it flows, um, at least, like, tonally-wise, it, it feels like you're like like just like a standard adventure like fantasy adventure it doesn't go like too far off the rails in terms of like i don't know like 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 throwing its tone out the window or anything like that like um i want to say like it's actually pretty consistent and i like that yeah um, yeah i liked the adaptation mm -hmm. a lot i thought it was mm -hmm. um the animation is pretty good it is uh f like pretty well paced honestly yeah um yeah, I think if you're if you're looking for something that like you know it'll be like a long adventure, um, Helk isn't a bad one to hop onto because it is there's there's a, a good amount of intrigue that they consistently develop through the storyline. Um, you've got the intrigue with what what the heck the humans are doing with their uh, you know soldiers that keep on reviving. You've got Helk who like his intentions and what he's thinking is like constantly obfuscated by like you know his optimism right he he like presents himself as a very optimistic character um just there to help but then inside you never know what the man is actually thinking right mm -hmm. and the other characters are constantly hinting at this they're like this guy is like really strong and we don't know what his intentions are you have to be careful of him and um he's got some kind of like darkness inside him <laughs> you know <laughs> he wants to destroy humanity and he's a human um yeah, so I, I like that a lot. Um, I would be interested in seeing where the story goes. I watched most of what they had out, mm -hmm. um, but it is it's it's ongoing into the next season. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I have I've um I've read the manga at least until like I think I've I'm fairly certain that I finished it. Um, mm. but at the, at the very least, I've read the the bulk of it, and I can say that it is. It becomes very, very, very bonkers, but I would also say that I think it appropriately ramps up to that level of, like, crazy shit going on. So, okay, that's yeah. good. <laughs> um, Helk to me is very, very solid. It is, to me, one of the prime examples of a very, like, well-thought-about world, right? So, like, taking the idea of a world where, like, um, there's, like, a human kingdom and, like, a demon kingdom and, like, the heroes have to go defeat the demon lord. And then just, like, basically just, like, tracing out the rest of it, right? And, like, essentially extrapolating a world from that basic premise. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it does a really good job of that. Yeah. 
All right. <laughs> um, and then, of course, the last thing, uh, last but not least, uh, Bucket List of the Dead, or Zombie 100. Yes. Um, I, I, I looked up what happened to it yes. while we were talking. Um, it is... <laughs> After episode nine, the last three episodes are on indefinite hiatus. Oh my god. It's just... <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yeah, they have not announced when they will come out with the last three episodes of the of the 12 episode season. Yeah. All right. Feels bad. Uh, feels, feels bad. Um, what is out of Zombie 100 is uh -huh. very good. Uh, I would say it probably is like the best thing that aired in summer, um, just from what is what is out. I went back yeah. and I read um, a bunch of the manga until uh, there was just like a weird gap, and I just didn't feel like tracking down those those chapters. So, <laughs> uh -huh. um, I think I I stopped reading around like chapter thirty six or something. But it's actually really good. The premise of it is actually like super interesting to me because it proposes a very radical idea um in a genre that is largely played out right um yes because the thing about the zombie genre right is that there's a there's like basically like a couple of th like thematic things that you can say right it's like you know, um, it's either about, like, oh, in, in like, uh, pieces where it's, like, the zombies are, like, the actual, like, you know, main threat. It's, like, you know, um, what horror does the zombie represent? You know, what, uh, uh, what fear is that tapping into, right? And mm -hmm. in other works, like, you know, The Walking Dead, like, is the prime example, right? It's, like, oh... This is like a survival story. The zombies are like an incidental part of the setting. Humans are the real like, you know, uh enemies. Yeah. Like what what yeah. does this say about, you know, uh the way that we interact with each other and, you know, society and like what happens mm -hmm. when society breaks down? Um mm -hmm. Zombie 100 is this very interesting take which approaches the sort of um the downfall of civilization um angle but in a very different way because like a lot of the time when you have like a post-apocalyptic story the sort of thing is like oh there's a bunch of people who because of you know the the end of society right they're like cool now it's time for the purge right like i just want to kill people and like <laughs> steal shit right uh... um it's like oh without the the chains of society binding us down like at, at our core we're actually evil avaricious creatures that you know desire mm -hmm. only our own uh satisfaction um and zombie 100 kind of takes that and just completely flips it on its head and is basically just like so like what what is a zombie right like it's like a a person that is not alive anymore but their body is still moving and it has become monstrous and you know it has the the it can go infect other people with that stuff um but what zombie 100 does is it's like well being a zombie is like basically like you know like just like walking through your life without really like thinking or feeling anything and yep. isn't that basically what like working in a corporation is like like yes <laughs> it proposes this really interesting idea which is that um the downfall of civilization the crumbling of society is actually this opportunity to be alive right mm -hmm. um it is the ability to free yourself from the chains of of society but like the negative chains, not just the, like, you know, the positive, like, social contract stuff. It's like, well, right. at the end of the world, like, the fucking capitalism doesn't matter. Your job doesn't matter, you know? Yeah. Like, we're out here fighting for our lives. Like, and the first episode does such a good job of depicting that with, like, you know, his first, like, uh, his first day where he's, like, all bright and happy. And then, like, 
every other shot, which is, like, the world is, like, literally gray. They've they sucked all the color out of it. Mm -hmm. And he's, like, shambling. He's like, oh, shit, mm -hmm. I gotta go to work. And then he, mm -hmm. like, you know, looks outside and there's fucking zombies everywhere. And he's like, mm -hmm. what the? And slowly but surely, like, he starts, like, waking up. He starts becoming, you know, alive again. And the color mm -hmm. starts returning to the world, like, first in these, like, kind of, like, really explicit splashes and then like in and then like just all of a sudden like he's like running and he's like wait i like feel my body and i feel like like i'm i want to live like i want to be alive and in that moment he he becomes alive again um and i thought that was a really interesting take for for a zombie show yeah, I love the direction that they t they took with it. Like, it needs to, you know, you can you can have a zombie setting or whatever, but it needs to be about something, right? And Zom One Hundred really does uh, have a unique take on that. That you know, you're presented with the opportunity of the apocalypse, and um, there's a it, it very clearly points out the juxtaposition of like. How do you want to? How do you want to take this in in terms of perspective? Do you want to take a positive spin or a negative spin? Do you want to die to some right. zombies or do you want this to be a restart on your whole life? <laughs> well, I, I think the, um, the really yeah. the really like um, I would say important thing that you know that he says uh, the main character says is like you can die tomorrow or you can die a hundred years from now, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you don't know. So like mm -hmm. you know, uh, you sh you should go out there and like do do the things that you want to do. And once you're no longer fettered by the you know the oppressive force of of capitalism, you know, mm -hmm. draining your personhood away, right? Mm -hmm. Um, it it gives you the opportunity to to be a person again. You know? Yeah, it, I. Uh -huh. I was just say there's just like there's just this implication that. You know, the way that society is set up right now is turning people into zombies and not right. in like the sort of like uh, haha black mirror way that is always like, oh, technology is like technology is bad and social media is turning us into zombies mm -hmm. or whatever. Where mm -hmm. Zombie 100, like fucking Chad Zombie 100 over here, like Comrade Zombie 100 is like, no, 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 <laughs> friend. It is capitalism that is the problem. <laughs> It makes us all into zombies. The zombie apocalypse is already here. <laughs> they have already taken your personhood away from you. Your labor, comrade. <laughs> I also I like that they took the the bucket list premise, right? We, I you know you've seen movies and media and whatnot where it's like, oh, it's the bucket list for this person who's dying, and then you know you want to make their life fulfilling before they die. Um, and they, they make that whole conceit a lot more palatable, like, like, oh, it's not I, just I gonna agree. be sad, whatever journey, I'm gonna cry my eyes out at the end. I might cry my eyes out at the end of Ed Zom 100, I wouldn't be surprised, but, like, the journey there is going to be fun and rewarding, uh, right? It's, honestly, um, mm -hmm. the, the sort of, like, victory lap tour de force feeling yeah. of it gives yeah. it this really interesting tone that is so yeah. different from a lot of zombie yeah. like shows because a lot of zombie yeah. shows are really depressing you know yeah. they're like really serious really depressing they're usually just yeah. like oh humanity humanity yeah. is the true virus the true enemy that is killing you know the human nature or whatever whatever yeah. whatever right yeah um i would um i would say like while you're watching the show, be aware of the fact, like, like I, I think it would be so hard for someone who has been entrenched in this media, this genre, be, to be like, okay, I don't understand this conceit of, like, happy, funny zombie show, right? Um, yeah. And it it leans full into that. It's like, this is a comedy. This is a, this is yeah. a full-on comedy. And, uh... What uh, you'll 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 understand that when the fourth character shows up. The <laughs> oh yes, yeah, I love her. <laughs> she as soon as she so shows up, the entire like like you can't go back to the tragedy angle. Anymore, no, no, no. Because she's she's just way too off kilter. And um, in terms of the group dynamic, I will I will say this. Um, yeah. I think that 
the real big difference, right? The 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 greatest difference between Zombie 100 and pretty much every other zombie, you know, uh property out there is mm-hmm. that it is a series that just like is very hopeful, right? It's like yeah. even though the world has functionally ended, mm-hmm. uh it is still it doesn't feel like well, we can never go back. It feels like well, like, I mean, we could die any day now. Like, we might as well do all the things that we, we couldn't do before. We, we might as mm-hmm. well get some fulfillment out of our lives. You know, we, uh, but at the same time, there's still this kind of hope that, like, you know, the characters are still alive. They still are, you know, out there journeying, and they still want to, to try to do something to, to potentially, you know, save people, to, like, you know, fix this zombie virus, and you kind of get this feeling that they can, you know? Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like, oh, there's, like, literally nothing we can do about it. It's like, well, there may be nothing, but we're still gonna, like, you know, look for it and try it. And having read some more of the manga, I think that there are some really killer moments of, like, some, some of that, like, zombie, uh, zombie series like meat you know the bread and butter right of like (laughs) Uh these like serious kind of moments but i think because it is juxtaposed with you know the the lightness of the show Mm -hmm. i think it kind of actually helps right because here's the thing right is if you watch a uh if you watch a series that is like doom and gloom just all the way Mm -hmm. you get fatigued right you get yep. this is like a, a known phenomenon is like you can get compassion yep. fatigue right so yep. like by the end you're just kind of like ah oh, whatever right but because of the the sort of roller coaster of emotions that you get you know the the variants um it it actually hits harder when that sort of stuff happens it feels more like more human and you know it feels like something could happen at any moment and but it also feels like, you know, stuff isn't happening for, for like, no reason, right? Which I really appreciate because I, one of the things that I hate the most, one of the things that I think is the most annoying things, especially about, like, zombie media, is the, like, well, people just die for no reason because that's realistic. And it's like, cool, I hate that, that sucks, that's boring. Like, I actually don't think that's really interesting. <laughs> uh-huh, yeah. Like, I get it that, like, it's, it's kind of like a thing, right? And it's like there's a, the, a sort of tragic aspect to the, to the zombie sort of genre. But, like, I think if you, if you doom and gloom too hard and you just kind of, like, wallow in the misery, I think that there's, you know, there's some enjoyment to be had there, obviously, right? Um, especially in, in the tragedy, you know, like someone cut short before their time, right? Um, somebody mm-hmm. heroically sacrificing themselves. But a lot of the time, it just kind of comes out of nowhere, and you're like, well, I like that character, and it kind of sucks that they're dead, and, like, it wasn't really satisfying that they died like like right. that, right? So, right. like, that is something that is, like, rife, right? Like, mm-hmm. and obviously, it's not like every property is, like, uh, every, every zombie, you know, thing is, like, guilty of that. I think a lot of them do a pretty good job with managing that aspect appropriately. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, Zombie 100 has these, like, really, like, honestly, like, really surprisingly emotional moments. Like, even in the first episode, like, when he, like, runs to, like, the apartment of, of the woman that, you know, he has, um, had feelings for for a long time and, um, like, you know, knows that, like, obviously, like, he knows that she's been sleeping with the, the manager for, like, you know, mm-hmm. better treatment, right, and all that stuff, but he doesn't really care, like, he just wants to, to, you know, get these feelings off of his chest, and, you know, he gets there and, like, oh, oops, she's a zombie, right? Like, yeah. even that moment, you're, like, you kind of feel a little bad, like, even though you're, like, okay, that's, like, she's kind of, she's not a good person, <laughs> like, yeah. You know, but also like you kind of also get this feeling like you know she she was probably also kind of a victim of of this system that like crushes yes. people, right? Yes. Uh huh. And one of the moments that like really kind of for me hit hard, right, was when he is like when the main character is like you know going around doing all the zombie stuff, and 
he's like wondering about what to do next and he's just like like i want to see my parents like mm-hmm the fact that I've been working so hard, like, what the fuck have I even been working for? Like, I've been sending money home, but, like, I just, I don't get to see my parents anymore. They probably, like, you know, I don't know if they're safe. I don't know if they, you know, hate me for not, like, ever visiting or whatever. And, like, mm -hmm. just the idea of, like, in the apocalypse, right, of just being, like, well, like, where are my parents? You know, mm -hmm. like, I haven't seen them in so long because of because of my job, right? And it really puts into perspective of like how much how much did that really matter, right? Mm -hmm. It's like he's like I wanted to to make life more comfortable for my parents, and so I put myself through all this crushing, grueling labor. But it also robbed me of the ability to see them, right? This like really yeah. strained, strenuous relationship. And like, man, ooh, boy, that fucking hits. Woo! <laughs> I was like, oh, he just wants to see his parents. He wants to apologize yeah. to his parents. Yeah. Yeah, that fucked me up. So, um, <laughs> Zombie 100. I'm a big fan. A uh, real shame about the the indefinite hiatus on those episodes. Yeah. Um, I highly I recommend want... reading the manga. There's some like really really good parts of it like i really adore the way that they handle some of those arcs and the way that they they end it's i mean it, it it's one of those things where it's like really surprising when you get invested into it because mm -hmm. you don't you like you kind of you almost don't notice right because a lot of it is like comedy and a lot of it is like you know um he's like really hilariously absurd things that are happening like a like a, a shark eats a bunch of zombies becomes a zombie and then like the zombies in the zombie shark like sprout their legs out of the shark and suddenly it's a yes. shark that can move on land like that's yes. fucking funny <laughs> like that is absurd yes yes and then he just he punches it with yep. with his like diver suit and like yep. i actually i actually do like that they brought up the like the diver suit stuff um and yeah. like the chain mail uh -huh. like it's meant to yep. like ward off shark teeth so obviously human teeth wouldn't wouldn't break mm -hmm. through but also mm -hmm. like you're still taking all that blunt force <laughs> so that'll yes. still hurt right yes and then i, I love the exploration of that <laughs> yeah because like that that's one of those things that like if you are steeped in the sh uh, in the zombie genre that's like number mm -hmm. one that you think about you're like oh yeah like diver suits 100 percent, and like wetsuits where like it's very very difficult for human teeth that are very blunt to bite through mm -hmm. uh, to like tear through them right mm -hmm. um and obviously like historically armor has been like incredible for this right so like when yeah um, when the fourth character shows up and she's just a fucking weeb in samurai armor, you're like, <laughs> oh, this is, this, I fucking love this. This is good. <laughs> and, like, also, she's wielding a, a naginata, which is historically, you know, one of the best weapons that you can have. A spear is one of the best on-the-ground weapons you can have to fight another yep. human being that isn't a ranged yep. weapon, right? It's good for crowd control. It's good for a single person. It's got the reach. It's <laughs> like she's well, fucking set yeah. up. Yeah. And like it's both this moment where it's like really funny because it's like, you know, this like blonde hair, blue eyed German girl who's just like, mm -hmm. I came to Japan to uh, eat sushi. <laughs> or whatever. And I also right? like that they. they... They point out that she knows more about Japan than probably I. Do I think that's Japanese so citizens. funny and one hundred percent accurate, right? Yeah. Where it's like, yeah. you know, that people that like love a different culture know mm -hmm. way more. Like people yes. that have to yes. immigrate right into the United yep. States know way more about U.S. history than fucking natives here do. Yep. Like, yeah. Um. <laughs> but I, I thought that was, she's such an incredibly funny, well done character. Mm-hmm. And it's such a self-aware thing to do about where anime is in in the broad, worldwide, global cultural space. And also, like, very, from a very, like, practical, like, zombie, like, uh, genre uh, world standpoint, it's, it's very practical to be in armor wearing, wielding a spear. So, like... Mm -hmm. I really like that, like, it's very clear that the creators are, like, genre savvy as well as, you know, um, putting together a good story. 
yeah, yeah. They they clearly did their research. <laughs> and I think the story is all the better for it. Um, I think if uh, uh, anyone who's listening sounds interested in this, um, highly recommend the first episode. It is such a good first episode. Um, the rest of yeah, the anime is yeah. good, too. Um, the rest of the anime is uh, good, but the but first yeah. episode is stellar. Yeah. It is so good. It's like so well directed. Good. Yeah, really, really good. Um, highly recommend that. Um, and then maybe catch the manga for the rest of it, considering the production issues. Um, yeah, it's a it's a good solid story all around. Yeah. Um, and mm-hmm. uh, unless you watched anything that I didn't. Um... No, that's that's it for me. All right. Cool. Well, then that's that's the end of our uh, the end of our uh, summer twenty twenty three. Uh, a little oh. bit of a shorter season. We still ended up talking for quite a bit of time, uh, mostly because I really, really, really liked uh, Zombie One Hundred. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, um, cool. Well, in that case, um, who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? Hello, I am Swan, also known as Renu. You can find me on Instagram at Swan dot Drawn. You can find me everywhere else at Swan Drawn. I, uh, like I said at the beginning of the podcast, I finished RE2 and I jumped straight into RE3. So that's what we're streaming over on Twitch. Wow. Yeah, otherwise, um, I've also been streaming. I stream art on Wednesdays, stream games on Fridays. Um, uh, Right now on Wednesdays, I'm working on commission stuff. I got commissioned to do a whole VTuber overlay uh, background set of things to do. So I'll be working on that. Um, if that sounds interesting to you, come on down. We like to chat and draw and do all that stuff. So. Nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what about you? You can find me all the places at Literal Soup. Um, I don't really use social media anymore, which I think <laughs> has uh <laughs> has been good for me in a lot of ways. Um, good. If you do want to uh, see what I'm up to, um, you can check uh, my my YouTube's account at Ooh. Little Soup. Um, most of what I've been doing right now is just com- kind of compiling the like funny funny moments that happen in my Final Fantasy XIV playing uh, into oh. into quippy little montages. Let's go! So you can uh, you can see what I'm up to there. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, that's uh, that's pretty much what I'm up to for for the time being. Probably until uh, until the end of the year. Like I'm um, I, I got a lot of like RL stuff to like sort out. <laughs> As it's always, the holidays coming up. It is the holidays coming up. You know, <laughs> it's uh, it's hard it's hard to find time to do stuff. Yeah. Well. Uh, anyway, um, our opening is by Scotty Network, and our ending is by Takamakata, and the patrons we are thanking this episode are Evan Williams, Magpie Miratess, Claire, Shondao, Cherubel, and Dylan Butts. Thank you so much for your support, as thank always. Thank you. Thank you, yes. thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> you keep the podcast going. <laughs> keep that podcast rolling. Thank God, because my <laughs> there are really some some notable gaps in our schedule. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Anyway, we really appreciate it. Um yes, and, uh, we really appreciate the continued support. And hey, uh it's about about the time to to mention now, you know, if you subscribe to your Patreon, you know, uh you can get a postcard. Uh Renu It is will... the season for postcarding. I'll be yeah. starting work on that very soon. Renu yeah. will Renu will design a custom postcard for for the year and uh and we'll mail them out. It'll be Handwritten messages from me and Renu. <laughs> Alright. Well, in that case, yep. we will see you next time. See you next time. またしたね。